This video is intended to provide a brief overview and demo of the App Metadata Analyzer for ClickSense Enterprise on Windows. This application was originally developed by the Enterprise Architecture team in the Americas and then was taken over as a project and is now supported by Click as of the ClickSense Enterprise September 2019 release. That being said, it does also support ClickSense Enterprise June 2018 plus and can be downloaded separately from Click Community. The app takes advantage of a new endpoint that was released officially in June 2018. This endpoint exposes application metadata in JSON that can be fetched using the native REST connector. That metadata includes server metadata, including the number of cores, total RAM, reload time, app RAM base footprint, field metadata, including cardinality, tags, and total count, and table metadata, including fields, rows, and key fields. This data is stored post-application reload and only includes data model relevant information. This data, coupled with data from the Click Repository database, allows an admin to have a holistic view of all of their application data models across an entire ClickSense site. This allows you to start monitoring what your developers are doing, establish best practices using thresholds for number of fields, number of records, and so on, and some clients actually use this application as a gating mechanism for applications to be migrated to production, relying on the fact that they must meet certain criteria that the admin has defined. So let's go see a demo. So we're now inside of the application metadata analyzer, and we can see a couple of KPIs and selector fields on the left-hand side of the screen. One is the memory footprint threshold. This is an arbitrary threshold that an administrator can set on the back end, so we've set it relatively low at uh, one gigabyte. We want to flag anything that goes above that as a base RAM footprint. We've set an arbitrary uh, file size at 500 meg, record count at 10 million, uh, and obviously we want to flag for things like synthetic keys and things like uh, data islands. Across the top, you'll see all of the statistics of the KPIs, how many tables we have in the entire server, how many fields, uh, the, the total table number of records across, again, the entire ClickSense site. We could take a look at the app memory footprint. This is the base RAM footprint, so the application being opened in RAM without any real users uh, consuming it. One that we can see here is almost 64 gigabytes in RAM, aptly named large app. The application that we're, however, going to focus on is the EA Ops dashboard. So when we select that, we can now see the all of the table memory footprint. So these would be uh, the data tables in ClickSense. And then you have your field memory footprint, and this would be the symbol tables in ClickSense. Below, you can see the, each, the total amount of records uh, for each table and the total amount of uh, field records. What you'll notice, though, is that we've got one table that has uh, almost a, that consumes almost a gigabyte in RAM, which is... Uh, a large amount of the application's total base RAM footprint. And what this table actually is, is it's um, each individual word um, from a long string of text. So if we go ahead and select this, you can see that it's you know roughly 96 million records in that table. So you'd imagine every single unique word, and then there's additional uh, fields within that table as well. So it consumes a very, very large amount of memory because of the fact that it has um, so many distinct pointers uh, within that table, nearly 100 million. And now if we look at the field from the symbol table perspective, we see case description. And what this is, this is a field with um, uh, basically no repeating values. It's a, a large uh, blocks of text. So think free form uh, comments within a field. So uh, they're, they're going to be large and consume a lot of amount of uh, memory. So it's the, the reverse of what we were seeing on the other side, where now we have a very large uh, field memory footprint, but a relatively low um, amount from a table perspective, because we're only looking at 200,000 records. We're not looking at nearly 100 million. So the question that we asked back to the business users, because this application was technically uh, in production on another server, was do you leverage this, this case subjects table do you leverage you know, any of, of these fields that are within it? And then do you leverage the case description uh, column? And the general answer was, 
was no. At least they, they were able to um, say that we don't really care anything outside of the, the subject uh, itself. So what we're able to do is if we now go over to that application and let's say uncomment out and let's go ahead and drop that case subjects table and let's drop that field case description. So we're going to reload this application and head back over to the, the app itself. Now you'll note that there's, there's 468 fields in the entire application. All we're going to do is we're going to drop five of them, one, uh, one table, and then an individual field, uh, from another table. So we can view the, you know, the potential impact, uh, that we would have by, by dropping those fields. We're just doing a binary out of an existing app. We'll finish up dropping those two. And once this finishes loading, we will go ahead and kick off a task to reload the app metadata analyzer. And there we go. So let's go ahead and start this task. And the app metadata analyzer uh, by default incrementally loads. So it's going to look at the last time that this app was reloaded and only grab metadata from applications that were reloaded after that last reload time. So you should in theory only be getting this application itself because it is in fact reloading as well as that uh, singular app that we just reloaded and potentially maybe the ops monitor or the, the license monitor if that's uh, happened to be reloading since on this server. We'll head back over to the app metadata analyzer. We'll reselect that dashboard. Note that it's now 700 megabytes in uh, base RAM footprint down from 1800 megabytes. So by dropping those five fields, we saved about 60% of the total RAM footprint um, by dropping a table and an individual field that our end users weren't even relying on. So this application won't uh, show you whether a field is used or not, but you will be able to pinpoint individual fields that then you can go ahead and um, potentially survey your uh, your users and judge their you know how how warranted is a field in this application given its given its footprint and its its affect on the application itself. So we'll just use that as one of uh, very many examples, and we'll switch over to the next sheet. Here you can see more of the details. So if I wanted to look at any applications on the server that had synthetic keys, I can then drill directly to them, potentially talk to the developers, which you could find on the, on the following page. Any application that has data islands. So if you're creating data islands for filter boxes, they, they have uh, performance issues. And then again, just looking at anything that's anything in red here is something that's breached one of the arbitrary thresholds that an admin has set. Now, if I go to the following page, I can see all of our individual streams on this, uh, this test box, what's unpublished, what's published. And then I can look at the individual app owners. So we've, we've dummied up a few applications and given them synthetic keys. So if I go ahead and click on has synthetic keys, we can then see the owners of the applications, uh, that have created those and what the, what the actual apps are that contain synthetic keys. And the same thing goes for data islands, which there are quite a few applications on this, the server that contain data islands for better or for worse. And they're each, each, uh, worth going through. Now, if you look at the apps and when they were last reloaded, what you see in green, all of these are applications that have metadata available to them. That means that they were reloaded on a server that was, uh, June, 2018 and up anything in dark blue means that they're older versions. So they were last reloaded before this metadata endpoint became available, meaning that we don't have metadata for this applicant for any of these applications, they would need to be reloaded, uh, for us to fetch that metadata. And then others, you could see where the apps have simply never been reloaded. So we don't know, uh, it's never actually been written. Um, so we don't know what's in them. The last tab here is the app availability tab and think of this for uh, more of almost a capacity planning tab. And, and actually it's a, the ability for you to view load balancing rules. So for example, if we go back to this dashboard sheet, and let's say we have this, this really big application, the one that's 64 gigs in Ram, 
and we navigate back over to app availability, what we can see here is that this app is available on all three nodes. So you might imagine that you have four RIM nodes for end users or five RIM nodes for end users. You don't necessarily want one monolithic app having a you know 60 some gigabyte footprint across all of them. Maybe you want to pin them to individual nodes. So this is showing you the availability of where that application can actually be lifted. And then it's doing some, um, some very basic, you know, plus 10% cash, plus 20% cash, plus 50, uh, and so on to start to show you what the impact might be as you're, you're putting users onto that, that application. So typically what we advise is reviewing your, your large apps. And if you do have many, uh, end user nodes, potentially viewing where the application is available, if it is available on all, uh, possibly considering to pin it down to, you know, uh, at least two nodes for resiliency's sake, but getting it off of the nodes that it doesn't necessarily have to be on. And with that, we'll go ahead and conclude the uh, brief demo of the app metadata analyzer.